This is part two of how I cut my cloud costs by 95% with Traffic and Tailscale. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'll put a card for it up here. In this video, we're gonna to connect to a local app through the Edge cluster, and then I'll show you two ways to secure it with TLS certificates from Let's Encrypt. Let's get started. Using this new architecture is easy. Let's first create a test web deployment in the local cluster and expose it via a service. It's easy to start using traffic as an ingress controller without changing anything in your environment. You can continue to use ingress resources and you use annotations to tell traffic how to handle the ingress. If you want more control though, use the traffic ingress route custom resource. Notice that I have two rules. These resources will be running locally, so it doesn't make sense for me to send my local traffic out to the edge node and then back into the local network. Instead, if I'm local, I wanna consume all of those resources locally. In the production environment, I'll probably do that with split DNS on my pie hole, where a request for something to my internal name servers returns the internal address, but a request from the outside to a public DNS server returns the public address. In that scenario, I'd only need a single ingress route that answers to that single name, and we'll actually do that in the TLS section. In this demo, though, I'm using host names off of sslip.io so that you can easily duplicate this in your own environment. I have two rules that match on the host header for each address one for internal traffic coming to the internal address, and another for traffic coming through the edge router. Before you apply this in your own environment, change the external IP address to match the external address for your edge node. You can get that from the traffic service in the traffic system namespace. So I'll apply that, and we can see in the browser that our local environment is up and running. To connect the edge node to this deployment, we need to first create an external name service that points to the sslip.io name for the service. This can actually be named anything you want. We just need the name to resolve to an IP. The name that you choose here doesn't show up in the host header of the HTTP request. Its sole purpose is for DNS resolution so that traffic knows where to send the request. For that reason, you'll probably always wanna use an sslip.io name here. Otherwise, you'd have to maintain DNS records on the outside that resolve to internal addresses. So let's apply this service manifest and then move on to the ingress route for the edge. The ingress route is almost identical to the one that we applied to the local cluster, but it only contains the external host name and sends traffic to the target of the external name service that we created. In production, if we were using real FQDNs and split DNS, and if we named our services the same, then those two would actually be identical. After we apply that, we should be able to connect to our local service through the edge address. So the full path of what's happening here looks like this. A user makes a request for an address from DNS. That resolves to the edge node. The browser sends a request to the edge node. Traffic receives it and maps it through the ingress route to the external name service. It sends the data to that address, which is handled by the sidecar and tail scale. Traffic appears inside the local cluster with the address of the subnet router and goes to the local service for the workload. Kubernetes resolves that to the endpoint addresses for the pods running the workload and they handle the request and respond. The return path is simply the reverse of the path in, through the subnet router to the sidecar container into traffic and back out to the requester. Whatever you deploy, you probably want to secure with TLS. So how does that fit into this scenario? You have two places that can hold certificates, the local cluster and the edge cluster. If you put the certificate on the edge cluster, it can decrypt the traffic and then send it over the tail scale network to port 80 on the local cluster. This is analogous to how Kubernetes would do it in a single cluster, TLS offloading at the edge, and then unencrypted communication inside of the Kubernetes cluster with inter-node communication encrypted by the CNI. Since tail scale is encrypting the traffic between the two clusters, well, that's a totally fine option. Where it breaks is if you also want to communicate with internal services over TLS. 
If you're using different names, like we are in this demonstration, then it's fine. If you're using an FQDN with split DNS, the certificates have to be on the local cluster, and the edge cluster has to switch to using TCP to backhaul that encrypted traffic from the edge to the local cluster. The target also has to change. It can't send it directly to the service for the workload. It has to send it to traffic for decryption, and then traffic will send it to the local workload. Now, you could also mix and match these strategies, and that's one of the places where traffic shines as a proxy. Most ingress controllers lock the port to the protocol. If you're using port 443 for HTTPS, then you can only use it for HTTPS. That's not true with traffic. You can use port 443 for whatever you want, HTTP, TCP, or HTTPS, all at the same time. The one place that traffic falls short in this scenario is with its Let's Encrypt integration. Traffic expects you to have local storage attached to the pod, and this creates issues with running multiple copies of traffic for HA. Each of them has its own file system with certs stored locally, and there's no way to share that information. A traffic enterprise solves this with a controller that distributes certificates between proxy instances, but we're only using traffic proxy in this demonstration. So how do we solve it? It's easy. We just use Cert Manager to generate the certificates. Cert Manager will store them in secrets and we use those secrets with our ingress or our ingress route definitions. If you're using ingress resources, then you can do all of this with a single step. If you're using ingress route resources, there's one additional step. I'll show you both ways. So first, let's install Cert Manager. The Cert Manager docs give a single line kubectl apply command that will install the CRDs and everything else. At the time that I'm recording this, they're on version 1.6.0, but I always like to check the docs and make sure that I'm using the command for the current version. While that's installing, let's create an issuer. This is the piece that handles getting certificates from one of the backends that Cert Manager supports. We'll be using Let's Encrypt, and I'm gonna create two cluster issuers, one for staging and one for production. Cluster issuers will handle certificates cluster-wide, but if you don't want that scope, you can use namespace scoped issuer resources instead. Before you apply this, Change the email address in both issuers to use your own email address. Let's Encrypt uses this to communicate with you if there's a problem with your certificate or if it's about to expire. Cert Manager is good at renewing them automatically, but if something prevents it from doing so, the email from Let's Encrypt will alert you with enough time to fix it. Let's delete the ingress route we made before and configure TLS with an ingress resource. I have here an ingress resource that tells traffic to take requests for this host and send them to the local demo HTTP service. That's our external name service that points back to the local cluster. I have a TLS block at the bottom that asks Cert Manager to generate a certificate for our host name and store it in the secret traffic demo edge cert. At the top of this manifest, I have two annotations, one that tells Cert Manager to use the staging issuer and one that tells traffic to attach this ingress to the web and web secure entry points. When I apply that, Cert Manager is going to generate a certificate, store it in the secret, and traffic will use that to terminate the traffic. It takes about 30 seconds for that to happen, but once it does, we can visit the site in a browser and see that it's now encrypted. When we look at the certificate, we see that it's from the Let's Encrypt staging authority. Now that we know it's working, let's update the ingress resource to use the production authority and reapply it. In a few moments, we'll see that Cert Manager got a new cert and is now using that on the ingress. Let's do this again. First, just deleting everything that we just made and then repeating it with the ingress route. This time, we're gonna step it up a little bit. And in addition to serving TLS traffic, we're also gonna bounce HTTP traffic over to HTTPS. The piece that does this for traffic is called a middleware. And I have one here that uses the redirect scheme middleware to change the scheme from HTTP to HTTPS. I'm creating two of them, one for each response code because sometimes I prefer to use a 307. Browsers will cache a 308 or a 301, so be absolutely sure when using one of those that you want people to always go there. For an HTTP to HTTPS redirect, that makes sense, but if you're redirecting some URL to a new URL, and if you use a 308 or a 301, you won't ever be able to redirect it to a different URL unless people delete their browser cache. So let's apply that manifest and then move on to the ingress route. Here I have the HTTP and HTTPS manifests configured separately. The HTTP manifest will use the redirect 307 middleware that we just created. That will take the request and redirect it to the HTTPS endpoint. 
The HTTPS endpoint uses the certificate stored in the traffic demo edge cert secret to secure the traffic. Oh, but wait a second, we deleted that. So how's that gonna work? Because cert manager can't currently work directly with the ingress route resource to generate certificates, we have to create a certificate resource first. So here, we are going to request a certificate from the Let's Encrypt prod resolver and store it in the traffic demo edge cert secret. I also like to name my certificates after their domain name, replacing dot with dash. Although in this case, the name is so long that I'm only including the unique part at the beginning. So let's apply the cert and then the ingress route. And we'll see that we get redirected from HTTP to HTTPS and our site is once again secured by a TLS certificate. I said a moment ago that Cert Manager can't directly work with ingress routes. So how is it able to generate the certificate? It creates an ingress just for its challenge path. Traffic sees the more specific path is served by the ingress and it sends the challenge to it, even if there's already an ingress route for a less specific path. This is how you're able to use Cert Manager with traffic with only the extra step of creating the certificate manually. Once it's created, Cert Manager just keeps it up to date. I wanna show you how to do all of this with certificate generation happening in the local cluster. But before I do this, there's a caveat that you should be aware of. Once you make this change, you'll no longer be able to see into the traffic on the edge cluster and make routing decisions. If you're only routing to one local cluster, then that's not gonna be a big deal. But if you were already getting excited about using this to route traffic to multiple clusters or to some clusters and VMs or to any combination of different things, then you'll wanna continue with terminating TLS on the edge cluster and creating certificates on the local cluster for the local FQDNs. If you're behind that, you can still do this with Let's Encrypt and the DNS01 resolver. That's how I do it in my environment. The reason that you can't make decisions on the traffic anymore is because we're gonna switch from processing HTTP traffic to processing TCP traffic on port 80 and 443. And since it's TCP traffic, we can't tell traffic to look inside of it and make any decisions. It's literally going to take all the traffic and send it to the local cluster. It does this by matching on the host SNI with a wildcard that means everything that doesn't have an SNI header for port 80. For traffic that lands on port 443, we could actually use the SNI header for routing, so maybe you can still bounce all your HTTP traffic to HTTPS and then do the routing on the second pass. Let's just try and keep this one simple. So for this demo, we'll assume that you're okay with sending 100% of your traffic to the local cluster. We'll just get on with it. First, let's clean up the edge cluster by deleting the ingress routes, secret, certificate, and the services that we created. Next, we'll create a new external name service and ingress route. The service will use an sslip.io hostname that points to the IP of the traffic service on the local cluster, not the service for our demo application. This hands routing off to the local traffic instance and that's what lets us use the ingress route and the local TLS certificate. Since we're sending it to traffic, we have both port 80 and 443 listed in the service definition. The ingress route will send all TCP traffic from 80 and 443 to the local traffic instance using the host SNI wildcard match. For port 80, this wildcard means anything without a host SNI header, and for port 443, it means any host SNI header value. On the local cluster, we're gonna first clean up our old ingress route and then install cert manager and create the cluster issuers. If you get an error here about an unknown certificate, just wait a minute or so for cert manager to finish initializing. When that's done, we'll apply the redirect middleware from the last example. Finally, we'll create the certificate and the ingress route. The reason that we wanna handle certificates locally is if we wanna access local services from the local environment or from the internet via the same host name. Here, you can see that we're using trafficdemo.productionwebsite.com as that host name. That resolves to the edge cluster. The certificate challenge will come in through that cluster, be sent to and handled by the local cluster, and then the certificate will be installed locally. The ingress route is almost the same as what we used before. We're just using the new host name. We're still gonna redirect from HTTP to HTTPS with the middleware. By now, this should all be up and running and we can test it. So with that test complete, we can once again switch to using our production resolver and get a real certificate. Either of these methods is fine. Which one you choose depends on your configuration and what you wanna do with it. For me, 
I'll probably run with certificates locally and use split DNS off my Pi hole, but there are other ways to solve this problem. You could, for example, run a single node traffic cluster locally that routes to other clusters or VMs in your local environment. You can also run a job that fetches the certificate secrets from the remote cluster and adds them locally. You could store your secrets in an external system like HashiCorp Vault and then configure both systems to pull from it. I'm curious to see how you solve this with your own clusters. So come join the community in Discord and let us know what you come up with and how it works. I want to thank Traffic Labs for building the most intelligent reverse proxy and Tailscale for being so generous with their services free tier. Without companies like them building solutions that we can all use, this sort of thing would be much harder, way more expensive, and nowhere near as fun. If you're able to use this to save a bunch of money, please consider signing up for the Tailscale individual plan that's only $48 a year. That's a great price for what you receive, and it will help them continue to build a great service. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.